sacroiliac joint and pubic symphysis disruption. Reduction and fixation methods. Following this exercise, you should be able to explain the anatomy and the biomechanical forces of the pelvis relating to SI joint dislocations, to describe the steps to attain anatomical reduction, and define fixation strategies depending on fracture configuration and associated injuries. In type C lesions of the pelvis, there is a combined anterior and posterior lesion which allows the involved hemipelvis all degrees of freedom. There are three axes of linear displacement and three axes of rotational displacement possibilities and all combinations. Linear displacement can be posteriorly, can be cranially and can be dissociation. Rotational displacement, such as flexion extension in this direction, external internal rotation and abduction adduction. Different reduction techniques. Reduction using a Jungblut clamp and the pointed reduction forceps. Expose the lateral part of the sacral ala and drill a 3.2 mm hole respecting the spatial orientation of the sacroiliac joint. The position of this hole should allow later plate placement proximally and distally to this anchoring screw. Make a second hole in the iliac bone close to the sacroiliac joint. Insert two 4.5 mm cortex screws of appropriate length. Leave the screw heads 5 to 7 mm prominent of the bone to allow the Jungblut clamp to be mounted. Position the Jungblut clamp on the screws. Fix both branches of the clamp by tightening the screws. Manipulation with the Jungblut clamp allows reduction of the unstable hemipelvis. Regularly, the displaced hemipelvis must be pushed distally and pulled anteriorly for a correct reduction. Before reduction is performed, a K-wire can be inserted for temporary fixation of the sacroiliac joint. The correct position of the K-wire can be controlled directly after having distracted the joint using the clamp. With the Jungblut clamp alone, Correct reduction with respect to a flexion extension deformity may be difficult. To make sure that no flexion extension deformity persists, the anterior part of the pelvic ring is exposed through a fan and steel approach. Reduction is then completed by means of a pointed reduction forceps introduced either into the obturator foramina or into the pubic bodies. Reduction using a Faraberf clamp and the pointed ball-tipped forceps. As an alternative reduction technique, the iliac crest can be grasped and manipulated with a Faraberf clamp. In addition, an asymmetric or symmetric pointed ball-tipped forceps is inserted with one branch on the outer surface of the iliac bone and the other branch on the anterior aspect of the sacral ala. sacroiliac joint and pubic symphysis reduction and fixation will now be shown. Make a 3.5 mm hole with the entry point at the level of the interspinous notch directed toward the roof of the greater sciatic notch and into the sciatic buttress. Insert a shunt screw by hand, not by machine, so that the opposite cortex may be felt when it is reached. Insert a transcutaneous 2.0 or 2.5 mm K-wire for temporary fixation. The tip of the K-wire is visible inside the sacroiliac joint. Make sure the K-wire is not so long that it hinders correct reduction of the joint later.
defined the spatial orientation of the sacroiliac joint with the aid of a K-wire positioned inside the joint. Parallel to this K-wire, drill a 2.5 mm hole into the iliac bone close to the sacroiliac joint. Drill a 2.5 mm hole in the lateral part of the sacral ala. Insert two 3.5 mm cortex screws of appropriate length. Place the Faraberf clamp around the screw heads. Reduce the sacroiliac joint by simultaneous manipulation with the Faraberf clamp and the shunts screw used as a joystick. A residual flexion extension deformity can be easily reduced with the aid of the shunts screw. The Faraberf clamp compresses only the anterior part of the sacroiliac joint. Thus, an adduction deformity with gapping of the posterior aspect of the sacroiliac joint will result. This deformity should be reduced with an abduction manoeuvre with the aid of the shunts screw. Once the reduction is judged to be correct, temporary fixation is performed with the previously inserted K-wire. In addition, simultaneous reduction of the anterior part of the pelvic ring using the large pointed reduction forceps is recommended to make sure that reduction of the unstable hemipelvis is also correct anteriorly. A three-hole 3.5 reconstruction plate is contoured and positioned over the distal part of the sacroiliac joint. Drill the first 2.5 mm hole into the lateral part of the sacral ala. Remove the plate, then reinsert it together with a 3.5 mm cortex screw of appropriate length. This technique prevents the screw being lost because it is held and guided by the plate. The plate is repositioned and the remaining plate holes are filled. The screws are normally inserted by machine and tightened by hand. After removal of the Faraberf clamp, complete the fixation with a second plate positioned proximally at an angle of 60 to 90 degrees to the first plate. Remove the anchoring screws. Remove the K-wire that was used for temporary fixation. The shunts screw that was used as a joystick is also removed. A K-wire is used to define the midline of the symphysis. Position a six-hole 3.5 symphyseal plate centered over the symphysis and posterior to the rectus abdominis muscle insertions. Insert the first plate screw close to the symphysis. The direction of the screw in the sagittal plane is given by the oblique orientation of the pubic body. In the frontal plane, it is directed slightly divergent. Palpation of the posterior aspect of the pubic body helps the spatial orientation of the drill bit. Insert the screw with the machine and tighten it by hand. Control the alignment of the plate with respect to both superior pubic branches before fully tightening the first screw and insertion of the second screw. Insert the second screw close to the pubic symphysis on the other side in a slightly eccentric position to compress the pubic symphysis. Complete the internal fixation of the pubic symphysis by insertion of the remaining four screws into the pubic branches. Here is the final implant positioning and the correct reduction of this pelvic type C lesion. You should now be able to explain the anatomy and the biomechanical forces of the pelvis relating to SI joint dislocations, to describe the steps to attain anatomical reduction, 
and define fixation strategies depending on fracture configuration and associated injuries.